special welcome and invite you to join us downstairs after the service uh, for food and fellowship. It be a great time for us to be able to get to know you a little bit. And um, then some announcements. Please note the announcements in the bulletin. Um, and let me call your attention especially to the poinsettia order form that's in there. If you want to order poinsettias for uh, Advent and Christmas, please look at that. And also just a reminder that the deadline for getting in poems or essays to go into the church book that Reverend Patricia is putting together for us is uh, the deadline is December 1st. Um, and then a few other announcements. Uh, if you brought clothing for the clothing drive, please leave them in the fellowship hall. And if you brought foodstuffs for the Board of Missions in gathering and you haven't had a chance to put it up here, please just leave it in the back of the sanctuary. Uh, and this is the last Sunday for both of those. Um, next, as Leo Larson announced in our congregational meeting last week, we will hold an informational meeting about the available options uh, related to the parsonage. Um, that's next Sunday, uh, December 1st, uh, following the worship service. Okay. Um, and we've asked Reverend Hayes to give an update on uh, Fred's condition right now, who's here, by the way. So, an update on Fred. I hope this will be the last for a while. I'm delighted that he's here this morning. His recovery from surgery is going really well. The biopsy, though, did show another primary cancer. So he's probably back to square one as far as a uh, different type of chemo, the rain options, he's going to have some radiation, possibility of surgery. We won't know for a few weeks what the best course will be. So we're going to Maine for Thanksgiving to celebrate the day with family and friends. He'll have the radiation the week after Thanksgiving, and we should know what will come next as that finishes. But as I finish up here on January 5th, it's likely that he'll carry his treatment plan to Maine and continue to be seen by his team in Boston occasionally. It wasn't the news that we'd hoped for, but there is a path forward and your prayers are appreciated. Please know that I'm continuing to work. This weekend will be a wedding and a funeral, next weekend a baptism, so if you're in the hospital or if you need to talk, don't hesitate to call. My own availability might be limited, but I will, as they say, go to work. <laughs> Next weekend we begin Advent, and both Fred and I are truly happy to celebrate with you. Thank you. Um, and I should uh, mention that given this situation um, and the demands on right now, we have decided with deep regret to cancel the breakfast and beliefs that we were going to have in uh, Advent. It was just too much to uh, keep up with right now. I think you'll understand. I think we have additional announcements. I will let you introduce yourself and please keep them as brief as possible. <laughs> nice and brief. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lisa. To correct that, Barry, coffee hour is out here on the wing this morning because we're getting prepared for the Thanksgiving dinner downstairs. Um, the doors are downstairs are closed until 11.50, so please do not come down there unless you're working with us. Um, we do have more tickets if anybody did not get one and would still like to come to the dinner. And that's it. And Lisa will give you more information about coffee hour. Good morning, my name is also Lisa. <laughs> um, yes, we are having a coffee hour, a regular coffee hour in the wing, um, but there's also going to be a special coffee today. Um, the music committee is running the first one of this season of our Yuba Latte, um, and that is special coffee, and it's a free will offering, um, but it's from the your, your currants, you know, we have all kinds of flavors, French vanilla, hazelnut, I bought a new one, maple pecan, come back and check it out, um, and we thank you very much for all of your Oh, thank you. <clears throat> and also, that there's no Wednesday dinner this week. We 
because the next day is Thanksgiving, and, uh, so we will not be having Wednesday. So if you do show up, it's going to be dark. <laughs> um, the second thing is, Barry mentioned the clothing drive. The, uh, we've got approximately 50 bags of clothing on site and another 100 bags off site, big black trash bags that we need to pick up. We're going to be doing that Tuesday morning from about 8.45. We should be back here somewhere around noonish. If anybody is available to help, Keith and I are doing it at this point here, but if anybody else is available to help pick up bags and sling stuff, we would appreciate it. So just see me afterwards. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Doe and Matt. And we are announcing fair and stewardship. First, look at me. <laughs> I'm wearing harvest abundant and bright. We reap what we sow, and that is quite right. An announcement to show this, so please hark. The harvest fair just broke the 16.5 mark. $16,500. Another announcement to fight off the cold. The pledges coming in have been abundant and bold. In order to tally, we need all pledges filled out, turned in and counted, and then we can shout, hooray and amen, we are strong in this place, and we praise Jesus for God's manifold grace. Amen. Matt has extra forms if you forgot yours, and he's just going to walk up the aisle, signal him, please. Thank you very much. Oh, I see hands. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but she just said, top that. <laughs> um, so I, I don't have everything in verse for the rest of the announcements, I'm sorry. Um, but I will ask you just to take a deep breath and pause and let us now open our hearts and minds to God's presence among us. And we'll begin our service by singing hymn number 526, The Gift of Love. Come, let us celebrate the wonders 
As we approach Thanksgiving, let us be reminded of the words of the psalmist, giving thanks. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we are God's. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. The wisdom of scripture. Thanks be to God. God.
and provide free HIV testing and prevention services to people in need from a 10 by 10 canvas tent. In September, they offered all the HIV testing services at the United States Conference on AIDS, the industry's Christmas, and also launched the first program to give out PrEP, a medication like birth control, but for HIV prevention, for free by community hubs like grocery stores and laundromats. Having started with a blank Word document five years ago, McKinsey and his team are now in regular contact with the World Health Organization, which reached out to them to learn about their model for their upcoming worldwide, worldwide HIV testing standards due out in December on World AIDS Day. They have done a lot in a small amount of time, and here to share parts of the story is McKenzie.
The crisp bear arrived, and so too, just like now, the holidays came around. A very family-centric, loving, comfortable time of year. And what am I doing? Scheming. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this girl is so wonderful, so good. How can I get her to like me? I've got to do something. Something to signal that I'm her type of person, a good person. I've got to signal to her that I'm good too. That'll work. Be it true or not, I'll do the good thing so she'll like me. So I thought, what can I do? What would she respect if I told her I was doing? Any guesses? <laughs> Mom, Dad? <laughs> Love you guys. Written too. While squeezing my brain to come up with something, I landed in a good place. It came to me and I knew I had it. Know what it was? My golden idea? I decided I was going to serve food to homeless people at a food pantry in town. And not just that, there's always going to be a charity. I decided not just that I was going to serve food to the needy, but that I was going to do it even better, right on Thanksgiving Day itself, the Lamborghini of giving days. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was happy with that one. Checked a lot of my boxes, A plus, let's go. Had a home run in my pocket. The next morning, probably definitely told her all about it. I mean, come on, there were so many points built. Delayed gratification was miles from my forte, and I'm sure I ended the That school day ended, and I headed home to schedule it all and get my good deed on the books. Ring, ring, a woman picked up. I started, explained the situation, pulling details and motivations, and then asked when I could come in. Thanksgiving Day, the day before, day after if need be, whatever, so long as it's around now. She said, Thank you for your interest. Around this time of year, a lot of people ask to volunteer. Individuals, big groups too. There aren't any available spots right now. We're sparse on volunteers the rest of the year, but now for Christmas, it's all booked. Shoot. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm trying to look, look good, look and feel as good as possible, and they're really throwing a wrench in my plans by not having spots available. We exchanged my CDs, a thank you, a click, and a call. Okay, the plan seems to be down the toilet, and it was turning out that the girl of my dreams, to, to the girl of my dreams, I had written a good guy check that I couldn't cash. Crap. What do I do? <laughs> Scrambling, hey. I didn't feel like there was much that could be done. Deflated and frustrated, for the first time in my life, I started to wonder. I started to think. I started to think about why these few specific days were all filled, but the other, call it 90%, hard work. Thoughts were colored by my knowing that I hadn't had any interest in volunteering prior to the season. I wondered, why am I really doing this? Because if it was to help the people, the greater value of it was clearly to give time outside of the holidays. Those people are in need every single day. Hunger's there in September, maybe even more so than it is in November. And I started to realize that I wasn't seeking the opportunity to actually make an impact. I was doing it only and exclusively to look good, to reap the social benefits of looking like a good guy. And that's so messed up. <laughs> Not the point. <laughs> a different view started to enter in my mind. You know, like, what would she say? The girl who wanted to be a nurse because she actually cared about people. What would she say? What would she think? What would she think about my motivations? Would she respect them? And I looked at myself. Did I respect them? I did. I knew it in my gut. That feeling when you know. I looked at myself, I was too selfish, and I wasn't right, and it wasn't the right way to be. So I came to the conclusion that the purpose of volunteering, or spending that time to help to serve others, was just for that, to help and serve them, the people in need, whenever they need. The reason why you volunteer is to help someone, 
to help someone, just to do just that, to help them. And that's a year-round. It's pure that way. The more right, better, and good. Why was I so obsessed with providing help? Only, why was I so obsessed with providing help only around the holidays, when the holidays had come? When I knew full well that those same people would be starving without help, but two months down the road. Who was it for? What's my intention? I didn't volunteer that holiday season, but right then, I found that seed, and it wasn't long before I started to water. That Thanksgiving was when my mind started to change, and so too my soul, creeds, and desires. So that was 17. And uh, we're going to hit the fast forward button. Nah, it's OK. Uh, later that year, in 2011, I finished high school, went, went to college down in Maryland. And at 19, I moved down to Georgetown to study money movement and the universe, econ and business. That transfer, that transfer process took all of my time freshman year. Once it was done, then, on my first walk back from Georgetown, I saw homeless people sleeping under the stairs uh, by the T, or Metro, as we call it down there. It was time, it was the first time that I'd seen something like that, and I hated it, especially in contrast to the Hogwarts of the school that I was heading toward. So with a lot of the mental work behind me, I walked back to school, opened my computer, emailed 10 homeless shelters, and spent the next five years volunteering at a domestic violence safe house that comboed as a shelter. I was finally getting help. It was awesome. I loved everything about the experience. I was the overnight, sh the overnight shift specialist, 11 to 7 a.m. So many nights till 3 a.m. I talked to women I maybe never would have met, whose stories I never would have heard about parts of life, the darker sides. I felt I never would have seen. It was intense, but really nice. And I finally confirmed that I found my thing. My compass finally felt square. My soul more fulfilled. I was getting to help people. Heading toward present day of 26, 20 comes and goes, and it's more of the same. 21, my senior year of college, and I'm single for the first time since high school. As they do, some things, some things happen. Something happened, so it went to the so HIV tested. I hated it. it. Made me so nervous, and then so relieved, like coming up for air. We're all pretty similar, so I thought. Other people must be worried too, and asked about volunteer teams and started testing with the company just one week later. We tested so many, so many people, but quickly I realized that they were turning away the uninsured who had waited in line because, as the owner said, we're private, for profit, and we can't make any money off of them. <laughs> that did not sit right with me. In fact, it made me angry, really angry. It just wasn't right. People who are poor, they need services even more because they have limited access to opportunities. So silently, I said, screw you. And two weeks later, I Googled some steps and began a simple little nonprofit with the desire to test everyone, regardless of insurance status, free of charge, and out, out in the communities that needed it most. I had no idea what I was doing. But that moment was the bud of the organization we now call them. Beauty, suffering, growth, and serious good have all come from that decision. As you can imagine, growing a business takes time, especially when you're 21 and at the trough of your financial, your financial capital. 22, 23, and 24 were spent in corporate jobs I hated. Getting way overworked for projects and outcomes that I didn't really care about. 60, 70, 80, and sometimes 90 hour weeks. A 24 hour shift. I didn't even know those existed. And then nine more, just in one calendar year. It was soul crushing, and I needed soul fulfillment. So from 11 to 1 a.m. most nights, my co-founder and I would grow more town. Just kind of a small-scale, clubbish type thing that was more of a direction-based hobby than a natural company. In my wildest dreams, I had no idea it would turn into anything that it had. 24, and in October 2017, after a lot of nights spent, spent working on paperwork, we actually launched it. It was amazing. We actually did. Not only did, 
did someone get in the tank to get tested. But after her, 17 more people followed. That was the best. We were doing it. We were actually getting tested. People were actually getting tested. A handful of kids, it was maybe actually happening. So with too little money in the bank, and a thirst to spend my time in a way that made me fulfilled, two days later, I told my boss that I'd like to quit to leave 110 Health full time. And pretty soon after, entered the unknown. About that time, long story short, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. A friend in the industry put it, put it away I really liked it the other day. He said, yeah, I think I knew I liked you when I realized, oh shoot, this guy jumped out of a plane without a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I felt like somebody finally got it. Uh, that time sucked. I effectively, or rather, I affectionately and post-traumatically refer to those as the dark days. A real proving ground of how far I was willing to go to help people. Turns out, extremely far. They were hard, but I wouldn't trade. So yeah, times were better. But at the same time, we were pushing, pushing as hard as we could, plugging away, making progress. Still 25, we moved from 75 volunteers to 150 to 300 and then to 600 pre-medical volunteers. We found a way to money and started testing hundreds of people. Life got better. I hired some. Quit my nighttime bar back on the job. Got to focus even more time on it, on helping people. And lately we've been making big strides for the good. 26 and two months ago. In September, rather, age 26 and two months ago. In September, I opened the, opened the door and walked into the lobby of the Marriott Marquis, the home of the 2019 United States Conference on AIDS, the industry's Christmas, as I feel very comfortable saying this thing. <laughs> and, and cheerfully, about a year removed from the dark days, I looked up and read a sign that said, free youth-driven HIV screen, right next to a big white canvas tent. It was our tent. Our one tent. That weekend, only 23 months removed from our first event ever, the United States at the United States Conference on AIDS, we offered all of the HIV testing. That same month, we improved our ability to serve and launched a revolutionary program to give pills of prep, essentially an HIV force field, to people right away at our events. The World Health Organization, as RP, as RP mentioned, has also reached out to us to learn about our model. And in a week or so, we'll find out if they include it in their worldwide HIV testing standards. It's amazing what we can do when we care and focus on doing what's right and what's good. So today, 26, nine months, and one day, that's me now. My path, the sea, the water, and probably definitely way too much about my personal life. It's been nine years since that first thing. Nine years since I first really thought about my intentions around volunteering. That seed that got me thinking about, and eventually obsessed with that, helping people. It got me obsessed with doing what's right, and doing what's good, and believing that each of those two things exists. I love the idea of universal good, and universal right so much. When I think about it, that's how I think of God, the standard bearer of right and good. The anti lover the helper, the lover, the carer. That's, that's the God I want to believe in. And that's the God whose team I'm trying to map for. So we're coming up on five years since I got that HIV test. Volunteered for that clinic. Decided to start something to fix that uninsured unfairness. All told, I think we've done good. But one of the, one of the ways that good's really cool is it's kind of like candy, but without any of the drawbacks. The more good, the better. I want to do more good. We want to do more good. So starting very soon, we've been planning to launch, we're planning to launch a program with the new goal of ending the spread of HIV across the entire United States, once and for all, within the next very small number of years. We want to end it. We want to reduce stress, suffering, 
inequity, and unfairness. All of those evils. To me, HIV is evil because it threatens the people we love. If we ended it, wouldn't things be better? Wouldn't happiness and calm increase? Wouldn't it be great to dramatically reduce suffering? So, so no more people die. So no more people have to die or get HIV or tell someone else that now they have HIV or get shunned by their family or get sick and then get worse or cry funeral tears for the love of their life. I think stopping all those things from happening is worth pursuing. With a big team and future friends, I'm convinced we can do it too. Because we can, we must. It's just the right thing to do. So all this from a little seed that, that planted on a phone call. When a woman who said, Right now, everyone wants to help people, but no one is doing it the rest of the time. So what can you do? So, you're around. I know it's not as simple as it sounds. The rolling stone gathers no moss, but inertia is real, and getting going can be the hardest part. Chief example of being that year and a half gap between when, this, when I had that seed phone call and my starting to volunteer at the safe house. Life is busy and it's challenging, but worth finding the time to help people. My suggestion, because we love operations, <laughs> my suggestion, overlap helping people or volunteering with what you like to do. That's the trick. It should never feel like pulling teeth. And it's okay to get joy from helping people. It's better than it actually. When you enjoy it, the world gets two happy people instead of just one. Think about your hobbies, talents, your superpowers, all of them. You all have them. We all do. We can use your super how, how can you use your superpowers to help you? A couple years ago, before I was lucky enough to get to spend all my time, every day, helping people, I'd go on disaster response trips because they were wicked fun, active, and muddy. And the feeling of helping people whose lives had just been turned upside down was incredible. Think about what you'd like to do, be it for your soul, resume, or social life. All are valid. Just Google an opportunity and begin. Send that email, fill out that form, make that call. You can do it. It's a lot of fun. So dip your feet. See how you like the water. And please consider caring about caring for others all year round, not just in your moments. Thank you so much.
the morning prayers this morning. Will you pray with me? Today we gather here in an opportunity to seek out the race to possess, to praise you, and to thank you for the wonderful ways in which you have blessed our lives. We spend a lot of time looking for big blessings when all around us are opportunities to help others. Help us to be a blessing. Help us to reach out to others and help those in need with this compassionate love. We lift up our prayers for those on our prayer concern list and those whom that we have lit candles for. We pray for the family of Skip Davis who passed this week and for whose funeral is here on Saturday and for all those who grieve. We pray for Fred Hayes and his treatments and for Gretchen Teptimer who will be having surgery this week and for all who are waiting test results and who are challenged by their health. We pray as well for Kenzie's work that he may have a strong sense of your love surrounding him. And may your love be present as we gather around tables this week for Thanksgiving. And let us pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father,
gracious God, we give thanks for these gifts, for the food that has been collected today and throughout the year. And we ask your blessing on our work. We ask your blessings on our efforts, too, to bring your love to the world. Amen. Before we sing our final hymn, I would like to present, on behalf of the church, a check to Mackenzie for his work with One Tenth Health. That is good, good work may continue to thrive. 